Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So, a couple of days ago I received this and today we are going to install it in my Mark IV Mondeo. It's obviously a Chinese product and the quality is well, it's okay, could be a bit better, especially this. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. I got this thing from AliExpress and the reviews are actually quite good. I was surprised. So I decided to try it out myself. So without further ado, let's go ahead and install this thing. To install it, of course, we will have to remove the old radio. And to do that, uh, there are four screws. Two on this side and two on that side. To access them, we will have to remove this panel. And to do that, you have to take out six screws, I think. I'm not sure on that. So I think two on this side, two on that side, and two down here. To access these screws is not big of a problem. You just remove this little thing right there. To access these screws is a little bit of a problem because for that you need to take off this panel. But we will get to that in a moment. And so first, let's take off these little things. Take your little trim removal tool. That's one. This thing is in the way. I won't need it anyway. Oh, crap. Come on. And that's two. And here we can see, hopefully, the two screws. They differ. I don't think it's supposed to be that way. But I guess when the previous owner installed this thing, he must have lost a couple. So, oh well, no big deal. So first, let us take out these upper ones. That's one. That's two. Now the bottom screws, that's one, and that's two. To access these screws, you will need to remove this entire piece of plastic. It's a single piece, I recommend starting from here and then work your way to up there. It's held in entirely by uh, clips, but first let's remove this gear shift leather thing. This thing too is held in by clips and to remove it, you use your tool and push it in this gap. Not here, but there. And now let's just do that. And sorry for the mess there. Okay. Like so. And as I said, start here and then slowly work your way up there. Sorry for the plastic bag. I'm using it to protect the seats from the tripod. That's one. here. That should do the trick. And it did. And here you can see the screws. Remove them and this thing should come right off. That's one.
That's two. Does it come off? It does. Now, before you take it off completely, remember there are three cables here. You should remove those. So, and then a cable for this thing. Or there's two of them. But you know what? I think you won't need to remove those. Just leave it like this. Then here, you can see the four screws that are holding in the radio. Now let's remove those. And that's one. That's two. Three and four. Now this thing should come right out. Sort of. Oh, there's that cable. Okay, this thing doesn't come as far out as I hoped it would. But anyways, there's that cable and then there's the radio. I think it's for the radio. That green thing in the back. Unplug that and then this one. And this could be a little bit tricky because to remove it, there's a lever below it. Pull that up then that cable should come right out. Come on. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay, so I had a little bit of a problem here because I got confused. This does not seem original. And that was for that Parrot's Bluetooth thing. Here is the original cable. So now let's disconnect this and slowly start connecting the new system. Okay, that was easy. Now let's connect the cables for the new Android system. Mm -hmm. That's that. So this is actually the next day. Why so? Well, yesterday when I connected all the cables to, to the car, I just wanted to see if this thing works but it didn't i disconnected all the cables connecting them back together still nothing went to their home page no results there as to why it should not work went through the user's manual no information there either why but then i connected the old radio and that too didn't work and so it was clear that i have blown a fuse and yes so <laughs> today i have replaced the fuse i haven't checked it yet but hopefully everything will work so this is where we left off yesterday this was connected next thing would be the can bus decoder that should go here like so and the next is this, a uh, lot of cables for a lot of media. I think I'll only be needing one for the auxiliary inputs. The rest is for subwoofers, reversing camera if you have one and so on. Uh, but for the auxiliary, it says one for the left and one for the right. I don't know. I guess I'll just use both of them. that's that and then there are two USB wires uh, for whatever you want music videos whatever and since I don't drill any holes anywhere I wired them through the glove box I will show you how so these are the two USB input cables and up there you probably can't see but there's a hole big enough for them to fit through so you can wire these cables all the way through there i think that should be all the wires now we just have to connect them to the unit okay so that should be the power that 
that's for whatever. And this is for the auxiliary. These are for the USBs. That's two. This is for the radio. I think that should be it. Will it work? Fingers crossed. Holy smokes. Hell yeah, it does. Wait. Oh. What the? What is that music? All right, now that it works, I think it's time to put everything back together. Well, m most of it at least. First, let's stuff everything in there. Hold up, before I continue, there is one more thing. Before I bought this thing, I talked to people who have more experience than I do with this kind of stuff. And I asked them whether or not I will need a GPS antenna. And they said, well, the receivers in these things are strong enough, and no, I would not need a antenna. But after I installed it, it did find my position once, but afterwards it just said no signal. Now, this antenna was included in the package, but I didn't bother using it because... If I don't need it, why bother? But now that I do need it, I will show you how you can install it. And you can do that by connecting the cable of the antenna to the back side of the Android unit where it says GPS. And that's basically the only place where you can connect it to. So let's just do that. like so. And now for the difficult part. Uh, in order to use SatNav on your new Android device, you will need a decent GPS signal. Uh, the signal without the antenna was okay, but I guess not okay enough. So the simplest thing would be to glue the antenna on your dashboard. But I don't want it to go there, because I think it's just gonna ruin the look of the interior. And yes, that is important to me. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the antenna in there. Right in there. Hope you can see it. It's that thing over there. That's the antenna. Basically, you can put the antenna wherever you want, as long as the GPS signal is decent. In some cases, the signal could be really crappy in there. Then you can wire it somewhere up here, glue it there. Or you can be real stealthy and put it below these front air vents. Your choice. Now, in my case, the signal in there is actually pretty strong, with the antenna, of course. Uh, to find that out, you just go to settings of your new Android device and select GPS detection. There it should show how strong is your GPS signal. And that is how you connect and place your GPS antenna. Now, let's continue where we left off. Now let's test some of the basic functions. All right, so I have tested some of its functions. So I don't know about the auxiliary or USBs because I don't have them here right now, but so far everything seems good. Although there is one thing that's already gonna bother me probably is that you can't turn it off. Uh, you can't turn it on if the key is in off position, it has to be in on to turn it on. Yeah. Oh well, it is what it is. I guess now will be the time to put everything back together. So let's start with the screen itself. So you have four screws. Let's 
one. That will be number two. Number three. And four. That's the screen. Now for this thing. Huh, seems that the screen sits a bit deeper. There's a two millimeter gap here. Oh well. You know what? Screw that. I used these little washers behind the screws as little spacers and hopefully they will do the trick. Oh yeah, that's better. It's not perfect, but a whole lot better. Now for the rest. The bottom screws. Now for this piece of trim, should pop right in. It does, good. That should be it. This thing. That's it. Lastly, for these little things, that one's good. This one has a hole in it. That hole was for this parrot thing. For now, I think I'm gonna use this thing that was on that one. I'm just gonna glue it over it. No, wrong way. Like so, and that would do for now. You can probably get these in a junkyard or buy them on eBay or whatever. That's about it. So, this is how it looks. Not bad, I'd say. It's better than I thought it would. Well, you can see that this gray is slightly lighter than this gray, but it's not too bad. Also on uh, AliExpress, if you uh, search uh, Android Screen Mondeo Mark IV, you will get results for a Tesla style screen. It's much bigger than this one. It's I think goes all the way to down here, I think. I don't know. Some people may like that thing more than this one, and maybe if I were to install it in my car, I would like it too. But in those pictures, for me, it's kind of meh. Also, that thing costs way more than this does. This goes for 100 euros, I, I think it was, but that thing goes for 500 euros, so no, not for now at least. In a week or so, I'll probably upload a video on the features this thing has, uh, what works, what doesn't, what's possible and what's not, because currently I have no idea what to expect from it. 
Okay, and that is how you can replace the radio unit in your Mark IV Mondeo. It took a bit longer than expected, but the results are pretty good. I'm satisfied, for now at least. If this video was in any way useful for you, you can give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribing for more content. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time.